Hey everybody, it is Dak here from the Ed Boys, and today we finally have the Warden's Guide. I have been making some early raids three guides for each of the paths in the Tombs of Amasca, and now I'll finally be getting to those final bosses. All of my path guides are linked in the description. We're still only a couple of weeks into raids three games, so as I get higher KC, I learn more about the raid, and maybe even Jagex makes some more adjustments in the raid, I will eventually make a full raids three guide that'll include more information about gear setups and invocations and anything else that could be in a raids three guide. Today we we just have the wardens though. In this guide I'm gonna go over each of the three sort of four phases in this final boss fight. This will include talking about which boss to fight first and the small differences between the two wardens. Then we'll talk about the invocations that you can add to the fight and finally I'm gonna go through one full warden fight with you to kind of put it all together. All of this stuff is going to make for a fairly long guide, but it is a final boss fight in a raid, so I guess that is reasonable that there is a lot of information to it. To send the fight into phase one, you do have to talk to a mascot, though after 1kc, this is going to be Osmumpton, the NPC here, but you have to start with this NPC. Phase one of the fight, you're going to have to kill the obelisk in the center of the arena. You will notice that there are inactive wardens on the east and the west side of the arena. During this phase, the obelisk is going to be emitting energy orbs towards both of those wardens. Each of the wardens have two different attacks that it can throw out during this phase, and if you don't stand in front of some of those orbs to slow down the charge, then the disco lights are going to happen at the exact same time, and you are going to take a lot of damage. So at the very beginning of this phase, it's important to tank one of the two sides until those first disco lights drop down. Remember that when I say tanking the obelisk, I'm talking about just tanking these orbs on phase one. Anytime during the fight that I bring that up, we're just talking about standing in front of these orbs. After the first light attack comes down, you do not need to tank anymore since the attacks will already be staggered. So during this phase, each of the wardens has two attacks. First, we have those disco lights. If you stand under the lights after they drop down from the ceiling, you're going to take a lot of damage very rapidly. Olidus's warden, the one on the right, is going to use the red disco lights, and Tumekin's warden, the one on the left, is going to use the yellow disco lights. Remember, whichever side that you stand on, you are slowing down the charge rate of that warden, so the other warden is going to be attacking you first. I've been doing most of my kills by standing on the right side so that Tumekin's warden is going to be attacking first and those yellow lights are going to appear. If you stand on the other side to tank the orbs and the red lights are going to show up first, both light colors, all you have to do is just step out of the way. It's just that they're in different spots. Red lights do allow you to stand up and melee the obelisk, but the yellow lights are going to force you to step back from it. After those disco lights, each boss is going to throw out a charge shot. Again, it's going to be alternated as long as you have tanked one side for the beginning of the fight. When Tumekin's Warden, the one on the left over there, uses his charge shot, it's going to say in your chat, a large ball of energy is shot your way in an orange color. Orange means that you stand together, DD. If the team all stands on one spot, then you won't take as much damage from this hit. In a solo, you just have to tank it, though. When you see the purple phrase in the chat, that means that the other warden is shooting the energy ball, which means the team has to spread out. If you're standing on tiles that are adjacent to each other, or if you're on top of each other, then you will take extra damage from this attack. Again, in a solo, though, you just have to tank this one. Remember, the orange energy attack, you stand together. The purple energy attack, you stay away from each other. So when you tank one side of the obelisk orbs, you're not only deciding, like, what order the lights are being used and those energy orbs are being used during this phase, you're also going to be deciding which warden you fight in part 2 of this fight and which warden you'll be killing in part 3 of this fight. There are a couple of differences that we will be going over. Whichever side that you stand on to tank, the other warden is going to stand up for phase 2 of the fight and the warden on your tank side is going to be the one that you kill in phase 3. In general, Alindus's warden, the one on the right, it tends to be the easier one to fight for either phase of the fight. During phase 2, it's not going to use melee attacks, but the other warden will. And if you fight this warden on phase 3, the phantoms that spawn are a little bit easier to deal with. We will get into more details about that soon. I tend to tank the right side of the obelisk so that we can fight Tumekin's Warden first and Elidnus's Warden second. So they just fixed it so we can actually use Monster Examine on the obelisk, and it looks like it is weak to Mage and then Range, and then each of the melee styles is even, and it's all fairly close to be fair. They also did buff the Shadow of Tumekin within the raid, so the Shadow probably destroys this altar, but being weak to Range, it makes the Blowpipe a pretty solid option here too. Eventually, once you scale up the raid enough, a bow or a crossbow is likely going to outdo the Blowpipe since it'll have too much defense, but hitting it with a Dragon Warhammer or a BGS spec is going to help out with that too. The melee style are only a little bit worse than range, so a Grazi Rapier or the Osmumpton's Fang really can get you through this pretty quickly. Once the Obelisk is destroyed, whichever side that you tanked the orbs from, that Warden is going to be destroyed too, and the other Warden is going to stand up. In Phase 2 of this fight, you're going to be killing your first Warden. There's three things to break down for Phase 2, how to attack the Warden, how the Warden attacks you, and how the Obelisk in the center
center of the room is going to be attacking you. First, let's go over how to kill the Warden. The Warden will stand up and be using two overhead prayers. If you're fighting two Mechans Warden on the left side, it starts off by using Protect from Melee and Magic, so you have to range the Warden. If you fight a Lydnus's Warden on the other side, you're going to have to use Magic first because it'll be protecting from the other two. Each time that you knock the Warden down, when it stands back up, it's going to switch its overheads and it'll make you alternate between range and magic. When you attack the Warden, you will be attacking the Warden's shield. It's going to give you this yellow health bar, and you're actually filling this up rather than hitting it down to zero. When you get to use range, then you're going to fill this bar up pretty quickly, but when he forces you into magic, it is going to be a little bit slower, unless maybe you're rocking that new Tumekin's shadow. When you get the bar full, the Warden's going to drop down to the ground, and a core will spawn out in front of it. The core is always going to pop up where the Warden is facing when it goes down, so be aware of that. Any attacks that you do on the core are going to deal five times the amount of damage to the Warden's actual health bar, and any melee attacks that you use on the core are guaranteed to do a max hit. So you want to quickly switch over to some melee gear and attack the core as many times as you can before the Warden gets back up. Each time that the Warden falls, you are going to have more time to fight the core than you did last time. The very first fall, you can get six attacks in with a four tick weapon as long as you are tick perfect on attacking the core right away. This is an opportune time to drink a liquid adrenaline potion, which is going to make your special attacks use half as much special attack energy. And then go ahead and dump Dragon Dagger or Dragon Claw specs. The Dragon Dagger uses less special attack energy than the Claws, so you can get a lot more of them, making it a little bit better. But I haven't been bringing it lately since I only use it right here at the core, and the Claws are still a good option. My goal on these six hits depends on how many specs I used at the Obelisk already. If I'm currently at a full spec bar, then I drink that Adrenaline Potion, dump four Claw specs. If I attacked right away, I know that I get two more attacks after that, so I put on the Grazi Rapier for one hit, and then a regular BGS hit on the core after that. If I know that I only have one hit after I use those four Claw specs, then I just use the BGS smack right away. I am not using a BGS spec on the core, I'm just smacking it with a regular hit. Uh, I've already used my spec energy at this point, and there's no point in specking the core anyway. Anyway, the only reason I'm switching to the BGS is that's the most damage I can get out of any of my melee weapons. So when you're down to that last hit, the speed of the weapon doesn't really matter. You just want to get one final big hit in there. When the Warden stands back up, you're going to have to switch your gear again. You'll only ever have to melee the core. You're never going to have to use melee against this Warden. And remember that you're also going to alternate between magic and range each time that it gets up. So if you just knocked it down with range, you're now going to be using magic. But if you had just knocked it down with magic, you're now going to be using range. The second time that the Warden drops, you're going to have enough time to use 8 attacks with a 4 tick weapon, as long as you attack the core as soon as possible. And again, once you only have one attack left, you should try to switch to a harder hitting, slow moving weapon like the BGS or the Dragon Warhammer if you happen to bring it. And if you have any special attack energy left, you might be able to dump some extra special attacks from your Dragon Dagger or your Dragon Claws. The Adrenaline Potion lasts for a while, so if you sip the Adrenaline Potion on the last down for the core, it's probably still in effect and you can use some more specs. With the current core mechanics, I've always been getting the Warden dead after the third down, so I don't know exactly how many attacks that you can get out of this third down, but if it continues the pattern, it's going to be two more attacks like each time it goes, so you can get six the first time, eight the second, ten the third, and that's as long as you're attacking it right away. If you miss even like one tick right away, you're likely not going to get that extra attack. Once you have drained the Warden's actual health bar down to zero, it is going to move you on to phase three. Let's talk about how the Warden's going to be attacking you during phase two. Tumekin's Warden, the one on the left side, he is holding two swords. He's going to use all three attack styles. If you do the Warden on the other side, Alidnus's Warden, he's got a shield instead of the dual wielding swords. That Warden only uses magic and range. It makes it a little bit easier to deal with during this phase. If you're struggling against Tumekin's Warden during phase two, maybe try tanking the other side of the obelisk and fighting Alidnus's Warden. Lydnus's Warden in Phase 2, see if that helps. They both have the same attack animations for the attacks that they do share. The magic attack will be a red skull flying at you. Also, the Warden will lift up its right arm when it uses the attack, so you can see which attack is coming out before you actually see that red skull. For the range attack, the Warden is going to stomp its left foot, and it's going to throw a skull at you. It's a little bit more of a tan-colored skull. You are better off recognizing when he lifts his arm or when he stomps his foot rather than waiting until you see the projectile, but you do have time to switch your prayers as the projectile is coming at you. Tumekin's Warden can also use a melee attack where he will swipe his left arm. You really don't have as much time to react to this attack as you do the others, so I suggest you just stay on Protect from Melee and then swap to the other two attacks when you see them swapping back to protect from melee before he uses another attack. This is similar to like tanking the Nightmare. If you've ever done the Nightmare boss in a group, or fought Fosani's Nightmare I guess, anytime that you're the tank this is how you have to do it. 
All of these attacks also have unique sounds, so turning on your game sounds can help you react to them, especially the range attack in general. It sounds like the swipe of a sword. I definitely had plenty of times where I have heard that before I ever really noticed any animation, and it was pretty obvious that he was using a range attack. Sometimes when the warden lifts up its right arm to use a magic attack, it's going to turn off your prayer and then throw a different projectile at you. If it throws a red skimmy, you need to protect from melee. If it shoots a white arrow, you need to protect from range. And if it shoots a big dark purple ball at you, you need to protect from magic. This attack where it turns off your prayer is one of the toughest in the fight to deal with, but you do have enough time to react just like the other attacks. Just don't forget, sometimes it's going to turn your overheads off. It does tell you in your chat when it throws the attack that turns off your prayers, but it's really not that easy to notice it in your chat like during the heat of the fight. One last attack that the Warden has, the Stone of Healing. It does not actually heal you, that's just what we call it, it's just our joke, but uh, the Warden does toss like a little shadow ball at where you're standing. If you don't walk away quickly, then you're gonna get stuck in place and you won't be able to attack. You do have to move pretty fast to get out of the way of this one. I do get hit by it fairly often, but it's not super punishing when you get hit by it. You can also heal up while you're in the stone, so you might as well just sip a brew quick while you're stuck there. Fighting the Warden on its own is a little bit of a pain, it's mostly just switching your prayers constantly like fighting the Nightmare or Jad, but the main reason that this phase is difficult is because the Obelisk is also going to be attacking you. The Obelisk has three attacks to deal with. First you have the Lightning Skulls, the Obelisk is going to toss out some skulls that look just like the magic attack from the Warden, but they're going to hit the ground and send out a square of lightning that eventually gets to a size of 7x7. Seven seven. It's the three squares in each direction around it, which is kind of a lot of space. You can see where the Lightning Skulls are going to land because of the shadow on the ground that they leave beforehand you do have enough time to get out of the way of them like if you're just paying attention to the shadows you can always just run the full distance out of the way but you can also stand right next to where the skull is gonna land and the lightning won't hit you this has to be in like a little plus sign around the skull this won't work diagonally Next, we have the fan attack. The floor is going to light up a pattern like a windmill, and those squares are going to do damage to you if you're standing on them a few ticks later. It's going to move in that windmill motion around the obelisk too, so you just have to keep your feet moving. You don't have to run with the fan to dodge it necessarily. It is easy to just run with the fan motion, but you can also kind of run through one of the quote-unquote blades of the fan if you time it correctly, and this is also a lot easier to do if you're standing closer to the obelisk. Lastly, we have the converging beams. The obelisk is going to shoot out like a straight line north and south, and and then these beams are going to move from the north and south across the stage. They're not going to travel all the way across, but a few seconds later the obelisk will shoot out east and west, and the same thing is going to happen from those sides of the arena. You can dodge these lights by just like outrunning them. They never actually cross each other up, so there is always space to stand that is safe. But you can also run through the lights if you time it correctly, and this could be a little bit easier to do if you're using like a true tile marker on rune light. But in general, like a lot of agility obstacles, or if you've done underground pass where you have to run over those steps, you just got to time it where where you're actually running past where the light's gonna be and you never stand on the same square as that light. The obelisk will not use any of these attacks while you are attacking the core. In fact, it will cancel most of their attacks as the warden is going down other than the converging beams. If the lights are already moving across the screen as the warden goes down, those lights will continue their full attack, so be careful. None of the individual attacks from the warden or the obelisk are necessarily very difficult to deal with, but when you put the two together, it does actually become difficult. For the most part, once you get in a good rhythm with the warden's attacks, you're gonna find it pretty easy to get through this phase. Just always switching your overheads, it's gonna take up a lot of your focus early in this fight, and that's gonna make the obelisk kinda beat you up more while you're focused on the warden. So once you get in that that warden rhythm this actually becomes a lot easier this really is the same as just saying that practice makes perfect but that is the truth the more runs that you do here the easier it's going to be to react to each attack during this phase Let's go ahead and move on to phase three of the fight. When you knock out the first warden, the obelisk is also going to be destroyed, but the warden that was KO'd by the obelisk back in phase one, that warden is coming back. Phase three warden is equally weak to actually three different attack styles, range, magic, and crush. Uh, both stab and slash are still not that bad to be honest, but he is a little bit more defensive against them. Range gear in this game really tends to add up to very good accuracy. There's already really good range gear, and we just got some more best-in-slot range gear with this raid. So being weak to range is nice. That means the Tebow absolutely shreds. I've been using the Bofa, which has been pretty insane. And even the Dragon Crossbow with just regular Ruby Bolts does get the job done well. It is worth noting that it's also weak to crush just as much as it's weak to range, and that's kind of a big deal. If you go full Inquisitor's Armor and an Inquisitor's Mace, and then you have maxed out melee gear for everything else, you're really going to destroy this boss. I haven't had a chance 
chance to try that yet, but I am very interested in, in potentially throwing down some Inquisitors on this. The short answer for what to use for your weapon in this phase is just use range. Use the best range weapon that you have. The Warden's main attack is going to be to slam the ground, which will send a shockwave through the stadium. The first slam on the ground will be to the left, the second one will be to the right, and then both sides at the same time. The first two attacks to the side will always hit that middle lane, so you will have to dodge each of those first two attacks by like stepping two squares to the side and then the last attack the one that goes down the middle or I should say it goes down both sides it leaves down the middle safe so you just have a process of just stepping to the right stepping to the left stepping to the middle start that process over and you just have to attack from those spots every 20% or so of the warden's health bar the warden is going to turn on all possible overhead so that you can't hit it and then it'll spawn some skulls in the room you have to kill these skulls quickly or else the warden's going to unleash a ground wave that hits the whole stadium you do have to switch to a melee weapon for this you don't have any attack delay when you hit the skulls so you can just blaze through them in larger teams the skulls will have increased health and you are guaranteed to hit a one so sometimes you have to hit the skull twice in a solo though you'll only have to tap each skull one time if you kill all of the skulls in time you'll do some significant damage to the warden which is very convenient and then the warden will turn off its overhead and start using the wave attacks again the second time that you get that skull attack the warden is going to spawn a phantom on the left side of the arena if you are fighting a Lydnus's warden this is going to be Akka if you are fighting Tumekin's warden this is going to be Zback. either way they're going to start using range and magic attacks against you so once this first phantom spawns it's now time to use overheads Akka will always start with a range attack and he will always switch after three attacks so you're gonna get three range three magic three range three magic though so if you are using the stay vigilant invocation for Akka, then he will switch randomly instead, even as a phantom. Zback will always change his attacks randomly, no matter what, there isn't a pattern to it. So it's a little bit easier to deal with Akka than it is to deal with Zback. That's the main reason that I like to fight Elidnus's Warden during this phase, so that I can fight with Akka there instead of Zback. During this phase, though, you can switch your overheads as the projectile gets to you for Zback. You don't have to have it done preemptively, or else it would be impossible since he's using them randomly. But for Akka, you have to have your overhead on before he uses the attack. Whichever one you are dealing with, you now have to use overheads for the rest of the fight once you deal with the second set of skulls. After the third set of skulls that you KO, the Warden spawns a phantom on the right side of the arena. If you're fighting Elidnus's Warden, it's going to spawn Kefri, and if you're fighting Tumekin's Warden, it's going to spawn Baba. So you'll always get Akka and Kefri, or Zback and Baba. It's not going to be like random combinations of phantoms. Kefri will toss fireballs at you like it does in the normal fight, and Baba's going to toss stones at you. Both of them work the same way, you just have to keep your feet moving to not get hit by them and you can see where they're gonna go based off the shadow that they leave on the ground if you have the aerial assault invocation on that makes Kefri's fireball hit a larger area it will make the fireballs harder to dodge during this phase so be aware of that there will be a fourth skull phase and then only a little bit of damage to do after that that's gonna send the warden into its enraged phase this is the final phase of the fight it's gonna heal up to about 20% health again and then it's gonna stop using that ground wave attack instead it'll now begin to spawn a lot of lightning in the room kind of like the final fight of the Sins of the Father quest, you still have to deal with the Phantoms too, and the arena is slowly going to be getting smaller as the tiles in the back of the room are swept away. The first few times that you do this phase, it is really intense, but it is very possible to dodge pretty much all the damage, most of the damage I would say. The lightning can be a little bit rough at times, but you can keep yourself at very high health for the most part if you just stay calm. You have to make sure that you are moving your feet, but you don't want to just click randomly and run around. You want to click on squares that don't have a shadow on them currently, and try not to run across Across the whole stage don't click on a square like way over there that doesn't have a shadow on it try to click on a square like only a couple of steps away as long as you don't repeat which squares you are walking to you'll never get hit by either Baba or Kefri's attack and then at that point all you have to pay attention to is your overheads if you have Akka over there switching every three attacks, then it is pretty easy, but keep in mind Akka is going to be attacking faster in this phase. Also, Akka has a different animation when he slams his spear on the ground. That's when he's switching his attack style, by the way. Zback is not as obvious when he switches his attack style, but you also get to switch that prayer after he used the attack, so you have a little bit of time to watch it get to you. As with phase two, the more that you do phase three wardens, the easier it's going to get. As long as you have some ambrosia sips with you, getting through enraged phase can kind of be a joke, and as you master the phase, a little bit you won't even need those ambrosias to get through it at all you just got to stay calm and avoid the lightning for the most part like don't click on the shadows click on tiles that don't have a shadow there is a lot of information for this fight it is the final kill of a raid and it does involve two different bosses so there's a lot to talk about if you still have any questions about the wardens let me know in the comments section below 
Now that you know the default Warden's fight, let's go ahead and talk about the invocations that you can add to the fight. Ancient Haste will make the Wardens charge faster in the first phase of the fight. You can see under the Wardens, they have a little meter for where they're charging up, and that's going to go a little bit faster with Ancient Haste. All this means is that you'll be attacked more during Phase 1. It's not that big of a deal, especially if you have some Silk Dressing to heal up during Phase 1. Acceleration will make the Obelisk charge faster in the second phase rather than the first phase. This means that it's going to use its Phase 2 attacks more often. This invocation will also make the Warden attack faster during phase two if the obelisk is messing you up during phase two in general i would not use acceleration penetration is going to make the attacks from the obelisk during phase two a lot stronger so acceleration was making the obelisk attack faster penetration is going to just make those attacks stronger again if you're struggling in phase two don't use this one Overclocked will make the Warden attack faster during the final phase of the fight. This just means that the ground wave attack is going to happen every 5 ticks instead of every 6 ticks. This is actually quite convenient if you're using a 5 tick weapon against the Warden, like a Twisted Bow, a Crossbow on Rapid, or maybe even the Scythe. I wonder how full Inquisitors with a Scythe on Crush is going to do on the Warden. Overclocked 2 will speed up the Warden's attacks in the final phase by another tick, making it a 4 tick ground shock. Again, this is actually quite convenient if you're using a weapon of the same speed, like a Bofa, a Grazi Rapier, or the Inquisitor's Mace. And finally, we have Insanity. Insanity does a lot. This is going to make the ground wave attack happen every 3 ticks. You're going to have less time to kill the Skulls when they spawn. When you're done killing the Skulls, the ground attack is going to continue from where it left off, rather than just always restarting to that left side first. And also, the Lightning in the final phase will be faster, and the tiles from the back of the room are going to fly away quicker. Insanity is a bit insane. Alright, let's go ahead and run a full example fight to put this all together. Alright, time to fight the Wardens. Let's go ahead and check out what I have for supplies at the moment. And I'm going to organize my inventory a little bit. I'm going to put the BGS on. I guess I'll keep the claws nearby. And take some stuff out of here. I would like to have my Ambrosia and my Liquid Adrenaline on me already. I'm going to grab these Smelling Salts because they just ran out at the end of last fight. And I want, yeah, I want these two things to be up front, the silk dressing and then the, uh, the scarab, the blessed scarab. I'm gonna put the salt a couple, couple potions down, and then just alternate these potions. And they'll pull out, oh, come on, man. There we go. They'll pull out every other, uh, brew or a uh, tear. So I'm going to start the fight by sipping this Ambrosia, or Ambrosia, this Liquid Adrenaline, and putting down two specs on this Obelisk, and then just blowpiping it, and then I'll be able to still dump some Dragon Claws on the core. I'm um, actually, I almost messed up. I want to start off by tanking this side and getting Alidnus's Warden to stand up first. I usually like to do it the other way around, but I just put out a video of doing a full raid run where I started by tanking this side. So at least I'll have some footage, like some actual explanation of both sides out there if I do this side this time. But I have more videos coming out where I can show examples of, of both sides there. Let's go ahead and set the special attack up. I'm going to tap this salt. I'm going to sip the liquid adrenaline, turn on piety. Begin Osmumpton. Go ahead and one spec for a zero. Don't do me like this, squeaky BGS. Another zero, dude. Sometimes it just sucks to suck. Go ahead and start to blow pipe. Uh, we are going to start off with the red lights here, so there's not really anything that I have to like, try to react to and get out of the way quickly, because the red lights allow you to just stand up real close. So as soon as those uh, go away, I could be over here already. Well, I guess, yeah. I could try to sneak over here beforehand. You could do like a pretty efficient amount of tanking the skulls and tank a little bit less than I just did, but it's really not that big of a deal. I do want to withdraw one, because it has my silk dressing in there. Just slowed myself down by doing that. And I want to step in here. Uh, we're going to have another ball that's going to come in hot and kill me if I'm not careful. So I'm going to sip and sip again. It's a little more efficient to try to sip every 15 second mark on your salt. If I was really locked into the fight, that's generally what I'm trying to do. But uh, not always so good at talking about what I'm doing and doing it at the same time. We try our best to give a good example here. So we already got that guy KO'd. We have a Lidness's Warren coming in hot. This will be a canceled attack right here, by the way. Start off with magic with this guy. Oh, and I don't need my Protect from Melee ever. Let's just start an attack and see what he does. Oh, I do have all of the invocations other than Insanity on for this fight, by the way. So it will be attacking kind of fast. Those blades are going to be coming at us. It's only using magic attacks so far, so this is kind of convenient. I'm just going to follow the blades and keep running. Just watching his arm. Yep, another arm attack. Lots of arms going on. There's a leg stomp, so we know range is coming in hot. Keep running from him. There's a white arrow. Turned off my prayer. We're good to go. He's going down soon. 
Be sure to switch to magic. And see if I can be ready for this to attack right away. One spec. I'll get three specs in here. There's a third there. I can attack twice with the Grazi. And then I should have enough time to get the BGS spec in there. I think I tapped it quick enough. Yeah, just got it. Beautiful. I think it said BGS spec. Just, just a smack. You do not have to spec with the BGS there. Ooh. Lightning skulls would be a good time to try to show an example. Yeah, right here. So I can stand two squares away, like in a little plus sign. Oh, now I'm going to get hit by the Stone of Healing. Um, hopefully that was a decent example of being able to dodge the Lightning Skull as quickly as it happened there. Uh, go ahead and withdraw one because it's going to be my Scarab, right? And tap that for some prayer. Oh, the stone! Nice, nice, nice. Could be doing, going down kind of soon, excuse me. English. Oh, so these lasers won't get cancelled first. Go ahead and run through them like so, and he's going down now. So I didn't attack right away. We're only going to get seven attacks in there. I was definitely like a tick late. So there's two. Get three. Four. Five. So one more hit with the Grazi. Smack with this. We're going to go ahead and turn on an overhead prayer. We know he's standing up and he'll attack kind of soon. And, you know, I could have attacked. Did I just do that math way wrong? Like, why do I have so many more? Are we on the third down, fellas? I must have just counted wrong, man. It's like 4 in the morning while I'm doing this, but uh, my bad on that one. Let's go ahead and mage him. I'm like lost at how long it was down. Whoop. There are little things like that that uh, I'll tend to know more after I get better KC here, which is part of the reason that I make a full guide in the future. And We're just making some early guides now to give you guys an idea of how to fight the boss. I wonder if there's a difference in how long the Wardens are down, like the two different Wardens, because I'm very used to always fighting two Mechans Warden in this phase. I wonder if Alidnus' Warden was down for a little bit longer. It seems off, but I do not know. I do not know. Alright, send him down soon. Stepped out of the way of that stone attack. Get out of here. There's one more range attack coming in hot. Good to go. Actually, Lightning Stones are coming in hot. Stand here to be safe. He's going down now. And I left him at 12.45 health, so I don't think I was getting another, like, five attacks in, four attacks. I wasn't going to get him down the second time there, but uh, that was strange how long he was down. I'm going to go ahead and start just chugging some brew life right after this hit. I have 55 special attack energy, make it 65, I guess, and an ambrosia, or an adrenaline hit, I should say. So I'm going to put on my BGS, step over here, and use two BGS specs on this guy. So it is going to be going at a four tick pace. Which might seem a little bit quick if you're not used to it, but what is convenient about this is that I'm using a 4-tick weapon. This, mean, this just means that I get to attack once each time. Which requires pretty much zero timing. Just wait to see the XP drop. Not necessarily a, a clean way to do it, because if you hit a zero you don't see an XP drop, but you know, wait till you attack and then run. That 51 was beautiful. I could step back a little bit too. Oh, here we go. I was going to say, because of the orbs spawning, the skulls spawning, it's nice to be back here when that happens. We're not doing insanity, so we always know that he's going to start off pounding this side over here. And we got to start off to the right. After the next set of skulls, we're going to have Z back. I'm very used to having Akka instead. But it's not too hard to react to Z back stuff. After I step over this time, I'm going to attack, withdraw all. Move on, just get a little more supplies going in the inventory. Really should be good to go. Once you get a rhythm of this ground attack, you can you can take like no damage during this phase for quite some time. Oops, switch to a melee weapon. So if we were on insanity, I'd be getting hit by these waves. But we got enough time. Oh, just barely switched to protect from magic. I forgot. z going to be making me react the whole time now, isn't he? You get a lot of time to react because it's right as the projectile hits you that it's deciding what prayer you're using, unlike Akka. It's when he uses the attack. And he's only using range. Now that I said something, wait for it. Oh no, still range. We got Baba coming in hot too. Go ahead and get these. And we can see the shadow on the ground over there already got a, a boulder thrown at us. 
So really, my strategy for never having to like deal with Baba and Kefri is just while I'm doing my back and forth with range, just always take like an extra step in there. And because I'm using a four tick weapon, we got Mage coming in hot. The timing on it, I just I'm never gonna get hit by a boulder. My weapon was a little slower. I would just take two extra steps. I would do something like this. But this will mean like I'm never not moving Oop. with the four tick weapon. Once you get a good pattern, a good rhythm with your feet going, you really don't have to pay attention to half the attacks. All, all you really got to keep paying attention to is z -back over there. Oops, oops, oops. Put on your bow, fool. Let's go ahead and, uh, excuse me. Again, I attack. Take like an extra step in there. Go and attack. Take a little extra step in there. Attack. And there's just no way I'm ever going to hit by Baba's Rock at this rate. We got a magic attack coming in hot. Oh, oh, we're final phase. No more ground attacks. Go ahead and sip up for some prayer. So right now I'm just looking at tiles that don't have a shadow on them is the goal. Oops. Try to not miss any attacks. Make sure I'm attacking every four ticks and we're good to go. As long as I don't repeat tiles, I won't get hit by Baba. And as long as I'm paying attention to Z-Back. You really don't take any damage. We're doing good so far. Come on. Just looking for tiles with no shadow on them. Ooh. Come on. Beautiful. I even take, like, kind of extra steps here. Oh, it happened. Look, look, look. Wait. I don't know. It was just as he was dying, too. I should have stopped attacking so I could really show it off. Sometimes the lightning stops, and right at the end there, it looked like it was stopping. Wait a minute. Uh, hopefully, it was a solid example, everybody, if you're looking for... How to fight the Wardens there. Uh, I'm going to have even more videos that will show me fighting the Wardens. Because it's a complicated enough fight that even just running through it once there. Trying to talk about what I'm doing. Uh, I'm sure there's things that I may have missed for the example. But hopefully that gave you a good rundown. at like putting everything that I, I said in this video together into one actual fight. Let's go ahead and check out the loot. I'm not going to... I'm not going to like get rid of the spoiler in the episode. I mean, we'll see if there's a spoiler at all. No such thing as a purple light. It's alright boys. Also, no pet feels bad, man. 450k coming in hot. All right, everybody, that is it for my Warden's Guide. If you still have any questions about fighting the Wardens, let me know in the comments section below. Down the road, like I was saying before, uh, when I get more KC, learn more about the raid, and when Jagex potentially makes any adjustments, I will be making a full Raids 3 guide that'll go in-depth on everything that you need to know about the raid. If you're looking for more information about the raid right now, I have linked all of my path guides in the description, and I'll be making some video of me just doing full raids, which will also be linked in the description. Thank you very much for watching this guide, everybody. If you enjoyed the video, or you just got some useful information out of it be sure to like and subscribe for more content i do stream on twitch which should be linked on the screen and in the description i am also on twitter and have a discord which are linked in the description thanks again for watching everyone and best of luck on your raids three grinds